Hey guys, in this tutorial, we're going to learn how to transform this two-dimensional circle into a custom 3D model. Ratio, start by selecting the ellipse tool, click and hold shift to create a circle, and from the 3D menu, select new 3D extrusion. Now we're working in a 3D space, you can control the camera using the orbit, pan, and dolly tools in the bottom left corner. And we're also going to need a couple of panels. So from the window dropdown, select 3D, and then properties. Now from the properties panel, we can adjust the extrusion depth. We can also navigate over to the deform tab and we get a few more options. So as well as the depth, we can play around with the twist, taper, and a few other settings. We've also got some presets that we can click through as well. And I'm going to start with this spirally corkscrew one. And you can see if I start tinkering with the sliders, we can see those changes in real time. Okay, that's enough tinkering. Now we can select different parts of the shape and we can customize the material color and all of the related properties. However, I'm going to do this in dimension. So I'm going to give this layer a name and then from the 3D menu, select export 3D layer. Select Wavefront OBJ as the type, click OK, give this a file name and export. So now we're in Dimension, first of all we're going to import our 3D model. Select the .obj file and open, press F to zoom to selection, and from the Materials tab I'm going to apply a plastic. Next I'm going to duplicate this object with Command or Control D, and then using the Rotate tool I'm going to rotate this on the Z axis by 120. Why 120? Well there's 360 degrees in a circle, and I'm going to add three of these coils, so 360 divided by 3, is 120. Hey, math. Now I'm going to duplicate this again and set the rotation on the Z axis to 240. Next, select all of the objects and snap them all to the ground plane. And as you can see, well, it looks pretty terrible, really. However, if we select everything and use the align tool to align these to the X axis, voila, we now have a Twizzly thing. Now I'm going to name all of my layers, one, two, and three, respectively. And I'm going to double click on the thumbnail for layer one and then change the color of the plastic. Pinky red, nice. We can then do this for the two other objects and give these colors as well. And then I'm going to select all of these objects, group them together and call the group Twizzle. I'm then going to orbit the camera and marvel at my Twizzle. <laughs> what am I even saying? Next, you can go to camera and then use the presets to snap the camera to different views. I'm going to go with a nice side on shot, zoom the camera in, and then add a camera bookmark. Now I'm going to zoom out to get a better angle of everything. And from the models tab, I'm going to add a plane. And I'm going to need to scale this up quite a bit. And then I'm going to adjust the camera to make sure my twizzle is centrally inside the plane. I'm also going to add a plastic material to this plane and then change the color to a very light gray. We can now jump back to our camera bookmark and give this a render. We can also adjust the material properties, so if I increase the roughness, for example, the reflection of the twizzle is going to be a lot softer. Lastly, I'm going to come outside of the material, select the environment, and adjust the intensity and the rotation of the global lighting. And there we go, there's a look at custom 3D modeling with Photoshop and Dimension. And if you enjoyed this one, hey, why not subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, take care, and I'll see you next time.